Alaska. In winter, a half million square miles of frozen wilderness. Alaska is a very dangerous place. You get off the beaten path up here, and it could be your life. It's the perfect place to hide if you're running from the law. They think Alaska is so big and so remote that they can come up here and nobody can find them. Hundreds of fugitives a year hide out in Alaska, thinking they can escape justice. Either sex offenders, the rapists, murderers, they're drug dealers. U.S. Marshals, get out of the car now! But only a dozen federal agents are here to track them down. Put your hands out the window! But they are the toughest of the tough. Bad choice to run from the marshals, buddy. Out here in the Alaskan frontier, we will chase these people to the end of the earth. Come to the door now and open it! We'll go out by boat in the summer, snow machine in the winter. We have our own plane. No matter how you get there, we can get there, too. U.S. Marshals, get down on the ground! They are the Alaska Marshals. U.S. Marshals, get out of the car now! A different breed of criminal requires a different breed of law enforcement officer. December. For the Marshals, this is fugitive season. U.S. Marshals, don't move. On the ground now! 20 hours a day of darkness and temperatures well below zero. It's about 20 below. Definitely not going to be like sleeping at home. It's the time of year that fugitives on the run hunker down and hide. We got on a fishing boat down in Seattle, and he's definitely a runner. Run, 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 run. It's when the marshals take the fight to them. As rivers and lakes freeze, they gain access to the furthest reaches of the state. Hey, hey, that's him, Randy. Let's go. You know what they say about the marshals? We always get our man. Today, the marshals are heading to the remote village of Bethel, 340 miles west of Anchorage. With no roads in or out, Bethel is a no-man's land in Alaska, serving as a desolate outpost for the 56 smaller villages surrounding it. We've landed in Bethel, and uh, as usual, it's snowing. <laughs> Rochelle LeDyke has been with the Marshals for 16 years, along with Deputy Marshal Sonny Connell. They're searching for a dangerous fugitive. There's our right. Thereafter, 29-year-old convicted sex offender Brian LaRoe, hiding in a village somewhere in western Alaska. He's a potentially armed suspect who has allegedly threatened to kill cops with a high-power AR-15 assault rifle. into the Alaska State Troopers post. We got one snow machine out here outside. We'll have to get ready for the trip. Due to the small size of the force, the marshals rely on the troopers and local police for support. This is a vast area of dangers. As you can get off on the wrong branch and go the wrong direction, we could end up way out here in, in um, more dangerous territory. I'm ready to rock and roll on a snow machine. Alaska in winter is one of the most extreme environments in the Marshal Service. Massive fugitive counts, less than four hours of daylight, and temperatures that can drop to 70 below. Let's do it! Out here in the Alaskan frontier, it's not the typical road systems. You have to use snow machines and go out on rivers that are frozen over. You've got weather conditions that can come out of nowhere, dropping way below zero. We've got large animals there. We're not at the top of the food chain. You've got bears, you've got moose, all sorts of things up there that are threats to us aside from the fugitives. Fugitives run to Alaska, think they can hide out up here in the wilderness. But you can only go so far until the extreme weather conditions will get you. As most of the US Marshals will tell you, we will chase these people to the end of the earth. While the long pursuit for Brian LaRoe continues, the Fugitive Task Force in Anchorage begins their next case. All right, here we are for Bobby Dwayne Thompson, armed and dangerous. Bobby Thompson is a 38-year-old convicted drug dealer who's been known to carry a gun. He's wanted on charges related to a drug conviction, and the marshals want him off the streets. 
You got new source information? He's still driving the white Yukon. Each of the vehicle was spotted this morning. According to a tip, Thompson's traveling in a white SUV that was spotted at a local hotel. We're going to set up in the parking lot surrounding it. We're going to wait until all the people are in the vehicle, and then we'll do a pinch in the parking lot. Any questions? All right, let's mount up and go. This is the fun part. The investigation kind of drags on. You get bored, you get frustrated, you get disappointed. But when it actually comes to the hit and the arrest, that's what we all live for. This guy's armed and dangerous. Bobby's got a proven history of it. Kevin Gwynn is the lead investigator on the Thompson case. He's been a marshal for over 23 years. Riding shotgun is rookie marshal Tana Kirkwright. We can assume Bobby is going to be hostile. We can assume Bobby is going to be armed. So the whole objective is to hit hard and fast. Bobby has been through this game a lot of times. Quinn and Kurt Wright are the first to arrive at the hotel. Isn't that our Yukon over there? We've got the car. We've got the Yukon. Can you see it at all? Oh, I can see the front end of it. You can just see the just the white of it. They set up surveillance across the parking lot and wait for the others to arrive. He's leaving. He's pulling out. Who is? He's out. Our guy. Target's moving. He's coming out. OK, he's just coming out, signaling for a left turn. He is going to be going eastbound on Spinard. I could not see who's occupying. Whoever's driving, standing on the gas. Jeff, you're going to have the eyeball in about 10 seconds. Jeff and I think it's, it's probably too you know, They might be picking him up, though. He's going in around right here. Just looked around the corner there. The Yukon pulls into the parking lot of a second hotel. And this is not the kind of thing we want to do in a crowded parking lot. But in the end, it's the bad guy's decision. We spend a lot of time reacting to what the bad guy does. We actually have the target vehicle in sight right now. We followed it from one hotel to another. The marshals take up four tactical positions around the hotel and suspect vehicle. When Thompson comes out, they'll swarm his car, cutting off his chances to run or if he has a gun, to start shooting. I am directly across the street looking at this vehicle. I will be able to tell if he gets in it. And if he does, we need to block him in right here. Now, the white Yukon is parked directly behind the hotel right now that we have information that he may be in. David Long is the task force commander, a 20-year veteran of the marshals. He's made every kind of tactical takedown. That vehicle is tied to Bobby. We're watching to see if he'll come out the back door of this hotel. We're going to start moving as soon as we see him. We're going to pull in right behind him. we we'll start to take down right there. And then everybody else fill in behind. Everybody's getting ready. Everybody's taking a deep breath. Any takedown that you do like this, you got to do it hard and fast. Speed, shock, and surprise. That way nobody gets hurt. But in reality, it takes one monkey wrench, a car stopping in front of you. You know, maybe you slip on the ice. That gives them enough time to go for a weapon or to make their escape. Marshall's Alaska Fugitive Task Force is after Bobby Thompson, a convicted drug dealer believed to be armed and dangerous. They're waiting for Thompson to exit this hotel, where they can surround him in this SUV and bust him. We're going to start moving as soon as we see him. You're going to pull in right behind him, start to take down right there, and then everybody else fill in behind. Approaching any vehicle poses the greatest threat to law enforcement. 
April 22, 2011, Toma, Wisconsin. Officers are after 28-year-old shooting suspect Seth McCloskey. After a high-speed pursuit, McCloskey pulls over. What happens next is law enforcement's worst nightmare. Officers have little chance to react. In the barrage, Officer Josh Kenworthy is wounded. For the marshals, the risk is losing the element of surprise, giving Thompson a chance to exit his truck shooting. Coming out right now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do it right here. Yep, go, go. Ready? Ready. Jump. Jump. Get down. Hands up. U.S. Marshals, get out of the car now. Yes. Hands up. Get out. Open the door. Get your hands up. Get your up. Hands up there. Have the driver step out. Step up. Hands up. Oh, keep your hands up. Hands up. Keep your hands where I can see them. There's three white females. We got one passenger in the back seat as well. Get your hands up. Keep your hands where I can see them. Turn around, face the front of the car. Okay, front seat looks clear. You got a gun? Let's impound this and get a search warrant. Apparently, they found a uh, weapon of some kind in the vehicle. So uh, we got four occupants in there. Get an ID everybody. They'll uh, start interviewing people and find out who they are. We're running this guy for warrants right here. This is not the guy we thought we were looking for here. Kevin, damn it, this is not him. I know him. Can't remember his name. Although he was traveling in the suspect vehicle and fit Thompson's description, it's the wrong guy, but one that Deputy Gwynn recognizes. Do I know you, big guy? Do I know you? I think you do. What's your name? I'm with the U.S. Marshals. I'm Deputy Gwynn. You and I have had some conversations sometime in the past. No? All right. Well, unfortunately, this wasn't Bobby. We're pretty disappointed about it. We knew that he was using this vehicle. Uh, we had information that he was in the hotel. We see a guy that come out to get into the vehicle that matches his basic description. We believed it was him. We pinched the car here in the parking lot. Turned out not to be Bobby, but he was a former felon that we all know. But Intel says that uh, he may still be in the hotel, and we're trying to generate more to find specific rooms. Let's go talk to the manager. You want to cover him? Go talk to the manager. You guys got a picture? OK. Kevin just got some last minute information here that there's two rooms associated with the uh, suspect with Bobby Thompson. So we're gonna get entry and search those rooms. Now we're gonna lock down. Searching for a potentially armed suspect in an unfamiliar building is one of the most dangerous things a cop can do. Worse yet, there's a lot of guns in Alaska and it's the state with the most per capita gun deaths per year. When you go up to a door in a hotel, you never know who's going to answer. You never know who's going to come out the doors in front of you, behind you, up the hall, down the hall. Bobby Thompson. Danger's everywhere, so you got to stay alert. In Alaska, you figure everybody has a gun. U.S. Marshals, open the door. Open the door now and open it. Back, 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 back. Back, 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 back. Down on your knees, down on your knees. U.S. Marshals, step out now. Back, back, down on knees. Come out the door. Police, U.S. Marshals, get down here. Let's see your hands. Bobby, U.S. Marshals, open the door. Police! He's on foot. He's on foot somewhere five minutes ago. Before the Marshals could lock down the hotel, Bobby Thompson slipped away. Hotel Dave, see if we can break off and just cruise the area. So we searched those two rooms. We searched all the common areas. Turned out that we missed Bobby by about five minutes. In Alaska, there's a lot of places to hide, especially if you have a support system. Bobby has a good support net here. He's got a lot of places to hide. Some we know, some we don't. 
and we burn him down as we know him. This place is done. The quicker we cut his support system, the quicker we'll have him in jail. We've put enough heat here, so now we've closed another door. Each time we close the door, it just makes it harder for him to find another one to get in. For the marshals, the search for Bobby Thompson continues. Meanwhile, in the western frontier of Alaska, Deputy Marshals Ladike and Cottle are searching for convicted sex offender Brian Lowe, believed to be armed and on the run somewhere near the village of Bethel. Okay. And then I've got down a brother. Is that another brother of his, too, then? Mm hmm. Oh, really? Staying in Gray House by his dad? Okay. It just got information that he's down staying by his dad's place. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. We're going out. We've got two police department officers ahead of us, kind of leading the way. They've said that they will. Um, shoot it out with officers and that they have AR-15s that they're not afraid to use. Need to take that seriously for sure. In the Alaskan villages, locals survive by hunting and most homes have a high-powered rifle like the AR-15. It packs enough punch to drop a bear in its tracks or tear through a bulletproof vest. There's a lot of windows here. Get one of the ARs up on those. Sonny, you cover the back in case he goes for it. They approach knowing a potentially armed fugitive could be inside with his finger on the trigger. Anybody's been living here for a while. It looks abandoned. We get quite a few cases involving him. He's known to flee from police, uh, whether it be a boat, snow machine, car, motorcycle. Um, he's threatened to kill cops. So he's not a very nice guy. Exactly why we need to get him in custody. Yeah. So that brown house is his dad's. He's not part of the, uh, I'll bring out the AR if you come to my door team. OK, all right. Maybe you and I just go up and go talk to him. Hi, I'm Rochelle Ledeck with the U.S. Marshals, and we're looking for Brian. The Marshals typically question family members when looking for a fugitive. He's so. been out of town. How about his dad? Has his dad been around? They're trained to read body language, and even a lie can help betray a fugitive's location. That's not totally true, because I, I spoke with her the other day, just two days ago. Sensing that Brian is close, they decide to check out another location. We can always go check out the house of his friend. He's been seen down there lately. Down there in the greenhouse? Yeah. Okay, all right. We'll head over to the greenhouse. Having hit several family homes, the marshals decide to investigate the home of Brian's close friend. The risks in approaching and entering any house is something the marshals know all too well. Two men are dead after a shooting in Elkins, including U.S. Deputy Marshal Derek Hudson-Pillar. February 2011, 24-year-old Deputy U.S. Marshal Derek Hudson-Pillar approaches a house in Elkins, West Virginia, looking for a wanted fugitive. Once inside, the suspect opens fire on the marshals, hitting Hudson-Pillar in the neck. He would die that evening. Um, hey, Sonny, can you cover the back in case he tries to flee out the back? Brian? Brian, come out. Where is he? U.S. Marshals, where's Brian LaRoe? He's inside. He's inside. Brian? <laughs> Brian LaRoe, U.S. Marshals. <laughs> Brian? Hey, open the curtain. Put your hands up now. 
Marshals Ladike and Cottle, along with local police, are searching for fugitive Brian LaRoe in the remote western village of Bethel. He's a convicted sex offender, allegedly armed and threatening to shoot police. Um, hey, Sonny, can you cover the back in case he tries to flee out the back? U.S. Marshals, where's Brian LaRoe? Brian? <laughs> Brian LaRoe, U.S. Marshals. Brian, come out. 